Hey everybody, Adam here. Hope everyone is doing well. Sorry it's been so long. I've just been going through the vicissitudes of life. You know how it goes. A few unexpected twists and turns, perhaps one or two or a dozen, resulting in myself being hoist by my own petard. It happens. And yes, I did just slip a Shakespeare reference into a video about roofing, but let's not even try to connect those dots. Let's just talk about roofing. All right, so hi, I'm up on the roof. Let me show you some of the views from up here. Pretty cool. Anyway, so <clears throat> first thing I have to say is that this roof is very, very, very far from being finished. Um, and when I am finished with it, it's not going to be a perfectly flat roof. It's going to be a low slope roof. So I'm going to build long ramps that run from the east side of the building down to the west side where the drain is. So yeah, um, due to the cost of the materials, it's probably gonna take me several months to finish the roof. So I figured I'd make a video right now, show you where I'm at instead of making you wait that long. So first I'll talk about the decking and then I'll go over the parapet. So I should actually call this uh, the sub decking because this is only the first layer, but I'm standing on 5 8 plywood. So it's actual thickness is just a little bit over a half inch. I think it's 0.56 inches or something in that ballpark. So pretty thick, pretty sturdy deck. We learned the hard way that Taping horizontal plywood along the seams is almost worthless. Um, I wish I had spent a little more money and used a liquid flashing because the plywood, see it's got, it's got grain and texture to it and no matter how hard you roll this tape down, it's even a little loose there, you're never gonna get it like all the way down into those tiny grooves. So in a light rainstorm, or a drizzle, let's say, it's okay. But um, in a heavy rainstorm, water gets right under there and yeah, it just leaks right through. Uh, it's not a big deal because when the roof is finished, this isn't gonna matter at all. This is more of like a temporary, well, it was an attempt at temporary water sealing. And you can see Taryn, she tried to paint over the tape, but it wasn't doing anything. So she gave up on that. And that reminds me, I have to say, before I go any farther, um, credit where credit's due, Taryn helped, Taryn helped me out tremendously with this part of the build. She did at least half the work, I would say. Um, I had two pretty bad back-to-back -back injuries over the last few months, which prevented me from being able to do much. So she stepped in and picked up a lot of slack. Also, when she was on summer break, we were pretty much a well-oiled machine, like an assembly line. So I would build the frames and cut the plywood down there, and then I'd hand the pieces up to her. She'd put it all together. Uh, I hate to use the overused analogy. It was like Lego blocks, it kind of was. Um, I built each section of the frame in uh, two foot lengths, so it's every section is 24 inches by 42 inches and I did that for two reasons. Number one, uh, the, you know, those smaller two foot pieces are just so much easier to handle because they're obviously much lighter. And you know, when you're up high like this next to a ledge, it's not the best idea, especially if you're by yourself, it's not the best idea to have, uh, you know, an eight foot length of frame that you're trying to work with. It's just cumbersome and dangerous. Uh, the other reason I did them in two foot sections is because these double studs provide a lot more sheer strength than single studs. You could accomplish the same with blocking, right? Putting a board in between them, but then that's just an extra step. And you can actually see, I should, you can actually see that I started with four foot sections and then I changed my mind and I was like, nah, two's better. Same thing with the plywood. I was gonna do four foot squares, 
but even those were a little bit difficult to manage from standing on top of the um, scaffold down there. So instead I decided, you know what, let's make life a little easier and just cut them into two foot strips. And that worked out just fine. It just required more taping, but that's not a big deal. So uh, last thing I'll say about the decking is I'm going to try to get started on this maybe this weekend. If not this weekend, then like in another week or two. I'm going to cross laminate the whole deck with 3 8 plywood. And there's a couple of reasons I'm doing that. Number one, it's going to make this deck really, really strong. I mean, it's already pretty sturdy, but it should be solid as a rock once I go over with another layer. And the other reason I'm doing it, and this is why I didn't just use one piece of three quarter inch plywood. One reason I didn't do that is because three quarter inch plywood is really heavy and I didn't want to, you know, worry about getting that up here. But the other reason is because by, let me go where you can see the seams better. So by overlapping and staggering the joints with another layer, not only is that going to increase the strength, like I just said, but that's just going to give me so much better water management. Um, you know, it's just, you have to assume that you won't be able to keep water out for the entire lifetime of the building. So just make it as hard as possible for it to actually get down inside of the building. That's the logic there. And if you're wondering why there's a weight plate there, I just always keep weight plates and kettlebells lying all over the job site for when I need to weigh things down. It's basically it. Um, Cause it's windy out here and materials get blown all over the place. All right, so moving on to the parapet, or at least uh, some more details about it. Um, so I used three kinds of fasteners for this and an adhesive. So every two feet, that's where we can see this a little bit better. So every two feet, I've got four of these number 10, two and a half inch screws. And so those go down through the bottom plate of the parapet wall, through the plywood, and about a half inch into the top plate of the wall below. Every four feet, I've got one number 10, three and a half inch screw over a stud, just in case it gets overdriven. And that goes down through the bottom plate, through the plywood, and all, almost all the way through the top plate. And then every eight feet, I've got one of these lag screws here. This is a structural screw. And you can see it's, it's much beefier than these screws. It's a lot more like what we would think of uh, as a bolt. And again, that's four inches, so there's one right there. So that's going through the bottom plate, through the plywood, through the top plate, and about a half inch down into a stud. And then underneath the whole thing, we put a stripe of Gorilla Glue because I can't take any chances with this. Um, it's, it's primarily a safety feature. So, you know, if I like lose my balance up here and I fall into this, it has to be able to take that hit. And I'm not the biggest guy in the world. I'm about 160 pounds, but you still have to imagine if I, you know, if I really lose my balance and lose control of myself and I fall 160 pounds in motion, it's a good deal of force. And I also have to think about other people that might be up here someday. What if it's somebody who weighs... 260 pounds. I also have to contend with high winds. Uh, we just had a really uh, strong windstorm that lasted two days. I think it was earlier this week. Yeah, like Monday and Tuesday. Um, so we can get we can get gusts out here that are 
up to 80, 90 miles per hour, that's uh, the, the same force as a hurricane. So, you know, I can't have this thing blowing away on me. So that's why I maybe went a little overkill with the fasteners and the uh, super glue underneath it. But, I mean, it seems to have worked out well. It's really sturdy. Also, the plywood, some of you may recall from previous videos, there used to be like a three or four inch gap there, like right above like the first row of plywood where you could still see into the house. So the second row of plywood, it's, it's strapping the parapet down to the wall below because it's, it's overlapping the top plate of the wall. And that, um, of course, just makes it a lot stronger. I hope that makes sense, even though it's, you know, I don't have the best visual representation here. And yeah, that pretty much covers it. Um, there are a lot of next steps. I don't want to uh, belabor that subject, but I'll run through some of them quickly. So I want to put um, another top plate all the way along the parapet. Uh, I'll probably use 12 foot two by sixes just to get it as, I mean, it might look pretty straight on camera, but up close, it's a little squiggly. So I just want to get it as straight as possible. It's a level as I can get it just nice and even. Uh, I already talked about adding another layer of plywood across here. Then I got to do the cascading ramps. Then I have to, actually before I even do that, I have to sheath the inside of the wall, then the ramps, then the foam insulation, then the rubber, then sealing the rubber, bringing the rubber up over, blah, blah, coping. It's a lot of stuff. <laughs> Gravel's coming up here. So we'll save that for another video when I actually get to that stuff. But yeah, so that's where we're at right now give you a little walk around the whole thing and you know try not to fall off of here also I'm extremely grateful for Taryn helping me with this because I'm acrophobic which is a pedantic way of saying I'm afraid of heights I think it sounds less wimpy and more like a legit medical condition you know I'd love to go up to the top of that ladder but uh, I was just diagnosed with acrophobia doctor's orders I, I can't so Anyway, that's maybe a story for another video. But yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. Another look at the views. And I will see everyone in the next video. Peace.